Hey everyone, this is the first episode of my new patron-only series, Smoke and Mirrors. I'm going to talk about the games I'm playing both as part of AI in games and elsewhere. As you'll know if you've been around for a little while, I seldom actually talk about what I think about when it comes to a given game when I'm playing it for the show, with the exception of course being Design Dive. It kind of detracts from the science and such that I'm talking about. Plus, in all fairness, I often play games I personally have little interest in, so I figured let's try and switch that around a little bit. It's one of those weird things where I play a lot of games for the show, but I seldom share how I feel about them. So I wanted to try something new for the Patreon to help foster some discussion in some of the games that I look at throughout the series, as well as games that you don't see on the channel, and would love to hear about games that you think I should be checking out as well. So let's pop back to earlier in the month when I was playing Far Cry Primal as part of this month's case study. I often find Far Cry to be a fun, albeit exhaustive experiment. It's a huge amount of content to explore, and often a fun experience, but frequently pushes me to the point that I don't really want to play another one again for a good couple of years. I once made the mistake of starting to play Far Cry 4 within weeks of completing Far Cry 3. In fact, it was for the Far Cry video a couple of years back, and I wound up stopping midway and taking a break for around three months. I found it too similar a game, albeit much prettier and a little bit more balanced to its predecessor. This is sort of expanded out across most of Ubisoft's live service model, with the similarities between, say, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and even the likes of Ghost Recon Wildlands and The Division is becoming more and more apparent. It's kind of exhausting when you jump into one of Ubisoft's titles to see the same things appearing, and often if there's any novelty in one series for mission design or gameplay structure, it will begin to rear its head in another game in some format or another. However, the one thing that Far Cry holds above these other franchises is the systemic gameplay, a point I discuss in both my videos on Far Cry 4 and Primal, where the numerous gameplay systems often clash in intended, albeit unexpected, ways. Far Cry 4 is for me the epitome of these systems, while Far Cry 3 is arguably the better game in terms of pacing and structure, even if it does fall foul of a lengthy and stretched out third act. It's to my mind still one of the best implementations of this approach, although I concede I haven't got around to playing the likes of Metal Gear Solid 5, or The Witcher 3, or even Far Cry 5 that apparently do a good job of these as well. But Primal proves interesting in its setting, the Mesolithic era circa 10,000 BC, meaning that many of the hallmarks of the franchise, such as gunplay and speeding around in vehicles, is lost. So I was really curious about how it would hold together, and interestingly when talking with friends, a lot of them actually skipped this entry in the series for largely those reasons. For one thing, the change of locales are rather refreshing. Rather than another tropical or foreign location with villages, enemies and encampments littered everywhere, the untouched plains of Oros Valley are actually quite fun to explore. It's often quite a breathtaking game to look at, even when just wandering around. I noted the emphasis on wildlife running around appears to have been increased in Primal when compared to the previous entries in the series, arguably in an effort to keep the game world busy and looking lush. It works to a large extent, and for the opening hours, and until you gain confidence in your skill and add new abilities, it puts you on the back foot as you're cautious of getting yourself mauled by wolves. As you start to progress, you unlock two critical abilities as part of the story. The ability to call an owl to do recon, a, me a mechanic that I believe has since been adopted in Assassin's Creed Origins, as well as taming wildlife of certain varieties. These are for me the first of two most critical steps to unlocking the game's potential. It's sort of a refresh of two existing mechanics in Far Cry 3 and 4, but with a lot more control over how they operate. But having a lot of control over how to spot targets and even attack them helps alleviate the lack of agency you have as a player. In fact, the tamed animals bring a small amount of tactical coordination to the game, given that each carries its own unique perk or buff. So while bears draw a lot of aggro, leopards can be sent in to eliminate enemies without being detected by the rest of the camp. It really allows you to mix up when attacking enemy encampments and the like. The third ability that I found crucial to my playthrough was for me to mount and ride larger animals such as saber-toothed tigers, bears and young mammoths. In fact, it takes a little time to unlock during play, which was a little frustrating as once you get around 6 hours in, the story and missions drive you farther out in Oris Valley and while you can fast travel, their locations are fairly spread out. Outside of these new touches, much of this is still business as usual for Far Cry. Players complete story missions, side missions, unlock outposts, respawn locations and gather up XP along the way to unlock over 40 items in the skill tree. The actual enemy AI is largely the same as before and still reasonably well balanced for when getting into big dust-ups. There are some aspects of the threat detection that I found kind of weird though. Attacking a base with the owl using a firebomb or beehive bomb, an upgrade you later unlock, allows for the enemy to detect you almost immediately even if you haven't been seen. 
It seems that now everyone knows roughly where you are and start making a beeline, if you pardon the pun, for that location. It was kind of frustrating and put me off using that mechanic in the latter half of the game, given I was often focusing on trying to breach these locations without being detected. The wildlife AI is great to wander around, and many of their behaviours are in keeping with previous Far Cry games. Some run away, others stand their ground and attack. Others such as the mammoths are largely passive until you do something that aggravates them. Hunting some of the animals as part of the major animal missions is kind of fun, though strangely aggravating given that suddenly you have saber-toothed tigers that are five times stronger than regular ones, and having them run away to lick their wounds only to have to run around and find them again, which was kind of annoying. In addition, there was one weird systemic behaviour that I found happened a little too often, whereby a predator would come up to attack but then be scared off by my pet saber tooth or bear. Thing is, it would then zip back a minute later and try again, and it strikes me that an extra condition somewhere in a behaviour would have been great at that point to either commit to attacking me or run off and never try it again. Otherwise, they sort of yo-yo around a lot. It's a moment that pulls you away from the experience as it sort of exposes what's happening in that underlying framework. I realise I'm a bit behind the times, so it may well be that Far Cry 5 has expanded upon these existing systems and improved them, though I've yet to hear anything about what they did on that title. However, given this is largely going to be heavily discounted these days, Primo is a rather fun game to spend 10 hours on, though I feel once you've burned through much of the story and some of the hunting missions, the game has kind of outstayed its welcome. Have any of you played Far Cry Primal, or even existing games in the franchise? I'd love to hear what you think. Naturally, if you want, do say so in the comments below, but also over on the Patreon post for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Smoke and Mirrors. In next month's video, I'm sticking with first-person shooters, and I'm looking at two games that I've been burning through recently in my spare time. The re-release of Turok Dinosaur Hunter and Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. I'm looking forward to talking about that, actually. It's been great to play through them thus far. Catch you then. Thanks for watching.